Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number two on using the Raspberry Pi microcontroller. Now in lesson number one, really all we talked about was getting your gear together, getting all the things that you'd need together so that you would be able to get the Pi up and running. Hopefully you not only have your equipment ordered at this point, but you have it in. And so today we're going to talk to you about how to actually get it up and running. Now the first point that I'd like to make that's, that's just I think really important is, is that you've got to know how to get your SD card, uh, the operating system installed on it. All right, now you you might very well have gotten a Raspberry Pi that already came with the SD card uh, formatted and the operating system on it. Even if you do, I really recommend that you go through this lesson with me so that you know how to download the operating system and you know how to get an operating system on the SD card. The reason for this is, is that even if your SD card came with an operating system already on it, the thing about the Raspberry Pi is it's very, very easy to corrupt that operating system and so you're going to need to know how to do this and so let's just go ahead right off the bat and let's learn how to get our card formatted from scratch and that way if you get into these projects and you end up messing up an SD card or ending up end up with something getting corrupted you'll know how to do it yourself and so we like to kind of do things from scratch and so so we just really recommend that you go ahead and go through this lesson what we're going to go what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to do three things we're going to learn how to format the SD card we're going to learn how to download the operating system onto the SD card and then if we have time what I'd like to do is go ahead and show you how to back up your SD card because when you go through this and then you start installing things and you start getting that operating system just the way you want it it's very easy to corrupt the operating system and so you want to kind of be diligent about keeping it backed up on your uh, on your PC the other thing, just as kind of an introduction to the uh, Pi that, that I think is just really important for you to know. And when you were working with the Arduino, there was really no way to mess it up, man. It was just like the Arduino was rock solid. It is very easy on the Raspberry Pi to corrupt your operating system. And so kind of when you're doing things, you always want to make sure that you have your SD card. Here it is. You want to have your SD card plugged in to the Raspberry Pi before you put power on it. When you put power on it, you never want to take the card out while the Raspberry Pi is, is powered up. And then finally, you never want to remove the power from the Raspberry Pi until you have done a proper shutdown. That would be in Linux and the terminal window you need to, to type in sudo shutdown and that will shut it down. Let it shut down before you take power off of it. So the sort of unpowering or turning off sequence is not like just pressing a button, what you have to do is number one, do a sudo shutdown in the Linux terminal window. After you've sudo shut down, then you can unplug it. And then after you've unplugged it, if you need to take the card out of it, you can take the card out of it. Okay, so step one, what we need to do is we need to learn how to format the card. What you cannot do is you cannot use the standard Windows formatter. You need to use a real formatter. The standard Windows formatter will not do a suitable job to make this thing work right with the Raspberry Pi. So we need to go to a website called sdcard.org. S-D-C-A-R-D.org. <coughs> you get to this website and now we're going to download some software. You come to download. I am on Windows and so I am going to download the Windows formatter. This website is a little bit slow today so we're going to have to wait for a second to get to that page and then it will take just a second to download it. This is just a handy program to have on your your machine because you're going to be you're probably going to be working with these cards you're going to be trying different things and so this is just a this is a piece of software that you're going to want. Okay we're at the download page. We read the license agreement. Yes, yes, looks good, looks good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, looks good. We can accept those terms and conditions. So we click accept. And then if you're on Windows Chrome, as I hope you are, I'm on uh, Google Chrome, as I hope you are, you will see it starting to download here. <coughs> Notice that it is downloading as well. 
uh, as a zip folder. So we're going to open that zip folder. Do not try to run this from inside the zip folder. That would be a very bad thing to do. You need to take it out of the zip folder. I'm just going to pop it here on my desktop. There it is now on the desktop. Now we are ready to install the software by clicking on Setup and Run. Okay, and it looks like it is installing the software. Yes, we want to install. Yes, that looks like a good place to put it. And yes, install. Okay. It'll take about 30 seconds probably to get this. Okay. So now we have it installed and you can see that I have a nice little icon here called SD Formatter. We probably, if we went over to the Windows Start menu, we would find something there too. But what we're going to do is we are going to get ready to... Now this really... Okay, we're going to run it. Okay, now this really will format things, okay? So what you got to be careful of is you got to make sure that you're selecting the right uh, thing to format. And so what I like to do is I have not even put this in yet. So in, remember, you're starting with the macro SD card. Uh, if you ordered the gear that I told you to... Uh, order you will have this adapter that makes it easy to plug this into the PC a lot of PCs you can't plug the micro SD cards into so you get this little adapter so this should be able to plug in you want to make sure that you're formatting the right card because you've got all types of things and you might even just if you weren't careful you might format something else that's plugged into so this is the way I like to do it I like to come up to uh, like my computer and sort of <coughs> see this my computer setup and now I'm going to plug it in and whatever appears will be the one that I want to format. Okay, so when I plug this in, let's see, let me try that again one more time, come to computer. Okay, so when I plug this in, there should be something new that shows up. Okay, there should, should be something new that shows up. Okay, and what showed up new is F. And so if I look at F, that is going to be the card that I want to put my operating system on. So I come over here and not E, remember it was F. Okay, and I'm going to call this maybe uh, the Pi. All right. And then if I look at options, the quick is OK. That's probably OK. And then I'm going to say format. Data may be retrieved after quick format. Do you want to continue? Uh, yes. Do not remove. I will not. OK. And so this is pretty quick. All right. Exit. And now let's just come over and, and if I take a quick look at it, Go back to F, it's called Pi and it's empty, and it is properly formatted. So that is all very good. I now have the Pi properly formatted, the, the Pi card properly formatted. Now the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I am going to want to download the operating system. To do that, we go to raspberrypi.org slash downloads and in fact probably if we just went to raspberrypi.org we could come here and then click on downloads and what I recommend there's different op uh, options there's a lot of different options for what you might want to do to get started the easiest thing is to get the noobs N-O-O-B-S. And so we're at raspberrypi.org and we are at downloads. And then what I like to do is I like to download the zip. And so if I click on this, it is going to start downloading. Now understand this is going to be downloading to uh, you know just our computer. And then I will show you once it's downloaded, I will show you how to get it over to that card. But you got to do it right with me. You got to do it exactly exactly the way I'm showing you in order for it to work. Okay, You can see that this is going to take a few minutes to download and so I'm going to have a cup of coffee and you can have a cup of coffee and we will come back as soon as this is downloaded.
Okay, guys, we are back, and if you look down here, you can see that our Noobs operating system has successfully downloaded. Now, what's really important to see, though, is, is that this is inside of a zip folder, and the first thing we got to do is we got to get it outside of that zip folder. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the zip folder, and inside the zip folder, you can see that we have all the things that we need. Do not try to move this from here directly to the SD card. What I have found that works best is come in and say new folder. And so I'm going to have this, and this is going to be my noobs folder like this. Boom. Okay. Uh, yes. Let's see. Where did that folder go? Hold on just a second. Uh, well, let me, let me, I'll just call mine something else. New folder, my new noobs. Okay, something that I haven't used before. Okay, there's my new noobs. And then here is the noobs uh, zip folder that I downloaded. So this, this is what we opened uh, after we downloaded it. I get all of the stuff on here like this, and then I'm going to drag it to my folder that I called noobs like that and now it is extracting it and putting it over there. Give us just a second. All right, so now I can get rid of this zip folder because I'm going to be operating from this folder that is not the zip, zip folder, the new noobs that we just created. Okay, we're going to open that up, and what we can see is all of those neat things an unzip folder that we just downloaded. Now I need to get this over to the SD card that we formatted. All right, so I'm going to come up to my computer and then remember that that was something that we called pi and that was f. All right, so I'm going to open that up. You can see that it's empty and I am going to get everything in the unzip folder. Do not try to do this from the zip file. We unzipped it into new noobs, and now we select it all, and then we are going to bring it over to our SD card, which we've already formatted. So we're going to bring this over as such, and now we are cop copying our, all of our operating system files over to our SD card. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and just let this... Uh, uh, let this go. I'll be back as soon as it's there. Okay, guys, we have it all copied over. So we went from our new noobs folder over to our SD card, and we look, and it all looks good. Now you want to get this off your Windows system, and uh, you want to make sure that you're diligent about ejecting it. Don't just pull it out. And so I'm going to say eject down here. It says it's safe to remove. Okay. So now, at this point, this is formatted with the operating system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the micro SD card out of the adapter and I'm going to put it in the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you want to make sure that you get it in the right direction. So this would be pointing towards you. And then on the other underside, it goes just like that. Let me see if I can get a focus there. Yeah. Okay, do you see that? And then you press it in and it snaps. It's one of those sort of press in, press out ones. So don't come in and just pull it out. You press it in to pop it out. Okay, so that SD card is in. Next up, if we're going to interact with this, we are going to need a way to interact with it. So we're going to need a keyboard. You'll notice on the Raspberry Pi Model 2, we have four USB ports, which is very handy. And all of us, I am sure, have an old USB keyboard laying around. Okay, so we are going to plug the keyboard in. And that's very simple. We just come up to the one of the USBs, doesn't matter which one, and we plug it in. There we go. Okay, we will also need a mouse perhaps. So we can come in and we can get the USB mouse and we can plug it in. Okay, very important. You always need to put the SD card on before you power it up. You need to get everything connected and then power it. <coughs> also, you never want to take the SD card out while you have power on, and you always want to shut down before you take the power off. So we'll go through all of that. Next up, we're going to need a display. So I have a display 
which I have the cable that we talked about in lesson one, which is the, the uh, HDMI to DVI. And so I actually have uh, a monitor hooked up to this, and I'll kind of switch over to that in a minute. But we plug the video cable in. And so now we should put it down here, and we should just about have everything. Right now for these first lessons, we're not going to need, uh, we're not going to be doing anything over Ethernet, and so I'm not hooking the Ethernet cable up. But let's see if this thing will power up now. And so I will, uh, in the future lessons, I'm going to have a screen capture going. So as I'm talking to you, I'm actually capturing the screen from the Raspberry Pi. I can't run the screen capture software until it's booted. And so for right now, the best I can do is just point a camera at the screen. I will just be pointing a camera at the screen. And that will be the best we can do on this lesson. But in the next lesson, then I will be actually running a screen capture program. OK, so let's plug this thing in and see if this will come to life. We've got the power here. And we will plug this in as such. OK, light came on. Maybe that's good. That doesn't look so good over here. OK, let's see if I got that in good. Let me make sure I got the uh, DVI cable in there. I just had the DVI needing a little, uh, a little assist. OK, so this is what you should have pop up if your cable's plugged in right, which mine is now. OK, so what do you want to do? You can use your mouse, and you want to, in, you want to install the Raspbian. OK, so you come here and click Raspbian, a Debian Wheezy port optimized for Raspberry Pi. So basically, this is a kind of a customization of Linux where it's tweaked for the Raspberry Pi. It's still really hardcore Linux. It's just kind of tweaked to run on the Raspberry Pi a little bit. And so what you do is you will select that first one, and then you will come up here and you will click Install. OK, then it says this will install the selected operating system. Everything will be trashed. Yes, so we're going to click Yes. OK, and now what you can see is it is starting the installation process. Uh, very quickly, I will have a much better screen capture program running. It's just I've got to get the thing booted, and then I will be screen capturing rather than this kludgy method of pointing a little cheapo webcam at the screen. But we do the best we can. And so you can see that it's going to take a few minutes for this to install. I actually suggest you kind of... It has some neat things that sort of go by, and if you sort of read those things as it's going by, you learn a little bit about the, the, the Raspberry Pi. Probably takes 30 minutes or so for this thing to go, and so I'm going to let you go ahead and, and, and get a cup of coffee and let this be going, and then I will join you after this step is done. All right, uh, we should be back now, and you can see that after all of this gets done, took about 45 minutes on mine, you end up with this uh, operating systems installed uh, successfully. So you click OK, and then we should come up with an option to get the thing configured. So you can see we're actually booting now. The Pi is booting up. And again, very shortly, I will have the uh, screen capture software installed, so we will have a much clearer image of all this. But for right now, I do need to get you to the point that you can boot. So you can see that you've got, uh, you've got options for configuring this. And so what you need to do is you need to come down to number three. So you sort of use your arrow key to come down to number three, enable boot to desktop scratch. Uh, OK, so you, you go number three, and then you click the right arrow. Okay, on the right arrow, it takes you to select. Once you uh, select, uh, once select is read, you click enter on the keyboard, and then it gives you three options. The first one is console, text console requiring a login. The second one is desktop login as Pi, and the third one is boot and scratch. We want to we want to boot in the console, so select the first one. Right arrow takes you to OK, enter selects it. OK, now right arrow to select, right arrow to finish, and now we should boot up. Would you like to reboot now? Yes. OK, so now the Pi is booting.
Okay, you get the nice colors coming up. Okay, and as soon as it boots, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to install the the uh, screen capture software. So for from here on out, you will be able to follow me uh, seeing a real clear uh, a real clear picture of the screen. It's just I can't run that until I get the operating system going. Okay, so let me just pause right now and I will be right back. Okay. Uh, one other thing that you need to go ahead and do is you need to go ahead and log in and you see that it's asking you for your login. Well, your username is Pi, so you type in Pi and then the password is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. The number one reason that people cannot get their Raspberry Pi working is they don't know how to spell Raspberry and they type the password in wrong. It's R-A-S-P, Rasp. Berry, B E R R Y, and then boom. Okay, and now we are logged into the command line and we are ready to learn. Okay, guys, we have got the Pi booted up, we got the operating system installed, we got everything done, and we are ready to start working, which we will start in the next lesson. But this is basically what you're looking at. You're going to boot into this window. You'll probably have to log on. Uh, if it asks you for the username, you are Pi, if it asks you for the password, you are Raspberry, R A S P B E R R Y. And then you should come up in this nice uh, terminal window like you see here. Also, you notice that while I was away, I got my uh, uh, screen capture thing installed on the Pi, so you're going to see a nice clear terminal window of the Raspberry Pi as seen here so you can follow along just really really easily with me so let's just look and just do a couple of things like if you do LS if uh, I have this right let's see ah, okay wrong keyboard okay so if I type in an LS what that will do is is it will show me the files in my present folder and you can see I have a desktop folder a Python games folder and so we are ready to start rocking and rolling here and learning Linux and learning the Raspberry Pi so that, that's all we're gonna really do for today the one more thing that you have to do, do you have to know how to do is how to safely shut down your Pi so let's do a sudo and if we do a sudo halt that should shut the Pi down and then you can safely unpack um, plug the power but you always want to do this first so we say sudo halt and it says we are shutting down now and then it should be shut down and even okay so it says that my connection is closed and so this will be dead at this point so we killed the pie as we wanted to all right, guys, these first two lessons have been a little bit tedious. In the first lesson, we just learned the stuff that we needed to buy. In the second lesson, what we just learned was how to install the operating system. Guys, really, if you got the card that is already configured, a lot of the guys sell the cards that are already configured, please go through this lesson and do it yourself because you really need to to know how to do this yourself okay I think that we're gonna try to learn one more thing in this lesson because you really need to go ahead and learn how to do this and you know this lessons relatively short already we're gonna have to learn how to back up the SD card okay because you will end up corrupting the SD card you'll lose power when you didn't intend to and so you really need to know how to back up this card so let's go ahead and learn how to do that okay so let's figure out how to back up this SD card Let's do this before we mess it up, okay? Believe me, you're going to start adding stuff to it and you're going to wish you'd backed it up. So what I recommend is every little bit back up your SD card because you're going to be customizing your, your Raspberry Pi operating system and installation and you really need to know how to back it up. So let's just get that bookkeeping stuff out of the way right now. And so we're going to come up, and the way you back it up is, you know, open up a Google Chrome browser and then you want to search on Win32 disk imager win32 disk imager okay and uh, the software is hosted at sourceforge.net and so you see the win32 disk imager download at sourceforge so we go there and then we come to this you got to be kind of careful because they seem to kind of help you to click on things you don't really want to click on here if you're not careful but you can see sourceforge here is the 4.1 stars for the win32 disk imager and then you click very carefully this download button don't click anything else it should start the download 
Okay. Don't click on anything. I don't think you have to click on anything else. Okay, don't load now, right? I mean, it will uh, it will start here in just a second, or it should. Okay, and I really, uh, as much as I like the Raspberry Pi, I have noticed that it's pretty easy to corrupt that SD card, and so you want to have you want to routinely be backing up your SD card. Okay, this is let's see if this is going to go uh, fairly quickly. Yeah, this is going to go fairly quickly, and so we'll just uh, we'll just sit and let it uh, let it download, and you can be going along with me and waiting. Maybe you'll want to go ahead and get a cup of coffee, but it will be done here very shortly. Uh, okay, looks like it's about done. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is, once it is completely finished, we are almost there. Okay, there we go. We are going to drag and drop that onto the desktop. So put it right there, okay. And now what this software allows us to do is it allows us to back up our SD card. So if I run it, yes, I want to run it, okay. Yes, okay. This is actually the setup wizard, so let's go through that. Yes, I accept, next, that's fine. Image writer, yep, that's fine. Uh, create a desktop item uh, icon, yes, and install. Okay, so we are installing this. This should take just a second. Okay, don't want to read me. Okay. Okay, let's see if we can run. Uh, the thing to notice is, remember, this is the installer, and then this is the software that was just installed. And so let's see if we can run this. Okay, yes, now it is running. So this is a little bit confusing, and so we want to make sure that we know how to. Uh, we want to make sure that we know how to back this up. So I'm going to get my card out here. I'd already shut it down, so I took the power off, and then I took the card off, and now I'm going to put it in the little adapter so that we can put it over on the Windows machine because I want to take it from this card and put it into Windows. And so first of all, on my desktop, I'm going to create a new folder called My Pi Backups. Okay, My Pi Backups. And now what I also want to do is I also want to make sure that I know what this card is. And the way that I like to do that is I like my computer. Let me see if I can get all this showing to you. Okay. Okay. Uh, I like to kind of look at the My Computer view, and you can see that nothing is showing. So when I put this in, I should see one of the things kind of show up. All right. <clears throat> Don't want to open it, and you can see that it's F. And so what I want to do is I will want to select uh, a device, which nothing is showing. Okay, hold on just a sec. Okay, so what we want to do, I think I've got it figured out here, what we want to do. So we're running the Win32 Disk Imager, and what we can see is, is that we're on uh, Disk F. What you need to do is this won't find things. This won't find things if it's not plugged in when you run the program. So what I had to do is I had to kill the program, and then I had to come back and run it again with the cart run it again with the card in, and if I run it with the card in, then it sees that it's F, and we know that F is the right one. I don't even like to open the Raspberry Pi uh, operating system when it's in the Windows machine, so I wouldn't even click here, but I know we saw that the F for us is the right one. And so we come in, and the device is F. That's where the the operating system is. We have to create a file now to copy into. And so what we do is we come over here and remember we wanted to go to desktop and then we wanted to go to my Pi backups and then I'm going to say Pi, don't, no spaces, okay, no spaces, backup. And then I'm going to say dash 525, which is the date. And then I'm going to say open, okay. And now what you can see is that I've got a place to put the image file, and I'm going to get it from F. And so this is a little confusing between read and write. Read data 
from device to image file. That will create the backup. If you want to go the other way, you would write, write image file to device. Device is the little SD card. So we want to read, okay? And what we are doing now is we are creating a backup. <coughs> and this will take a little bit of time. This is much slower than just doing a copy. And so this will probably take about 30 minutes. <coughs> so what we will do is we will let this finish. After it finishes, we will then uh, very gracefully eject the card and then we can put the card back into the Raspberry Pi and we will have a backup of it on the uh, on the Windows machine. You can see it's a very similar process to load it back onto the card but this is a lot easier if you corrupt your card than having to go back in and rebuild the whole thing from scratch. So keep that card backed up. Okay, so what have we done so far? In lesson number one, we ordered our gear and we collected all of our gear together. Lesson number two, we learned how to format the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. We learned how to download the operating system. We learned how to install the operating system, <coughs> then activate the operating system, and then boot up in that Linux command line, that Linux terminal window. On our next lesson, which will be lesson three, we will learn how to navigate the file system, learn how to start finding our way around the file system on the Raspberry Pi using Linux commands in the terminal window. Okay, you won't have to sit here and watch this download all the way. Hopefully you're doing this at home. But uh, tune into lesson three where we'll really get into the heart of the matter. I appreciate your patience on these first two lessons. It's just you got to get the bookkeeping and you got to get the, the, the configuration stuff down. But now we are ready to start learning. Paul McCorder with TopTechBoy.com. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. Maybe think about subscribing to our channel or sharing with other people. We will talk to you guys later. See you in lesson number three.